my name is Jared, and today we have gotten a ton of questions about what people should buy right now. The OnePlus 6 over here to the left, or the Pixel 2 XL. So these devices are certainly more similar than say if you were comparing the S9 to the Pixel or the S9 to the OnePlus 6 and things like that just because of the software experience. As far as specs wise, the OnePlus 6 certainly is the more 2018 of the two phones, meaning this has the Snapdragon 845, eight gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of storage, where the Pixel 2 XL has four gigs of RAM. It had, this one specifically has 64 gigs of storage and it has a Snapdragon 835. Not that the 835 is a bad processor, but the 845 did improve on a lot of efficiencies. Um, comparing the phone side by side, you have the notch on the OnePlus 6, a more full screen display, where the Pixel 2 XL is keeping the front facing speakers and bigger bezels on every side compared to the OnePlus 6. Neither of these have wireless charging. Neither of these have, well, <clears throat> I shouldn't say that. OnePlus 6 has a headphone jack, and it does not have ingress protection. The Pixel has ingress protection and no headphone jack. It does come with the dongle, though. On the back of the phones, they are pretty similar in the sense that they both have their fingerprint sensors in the center. The OnePlus has the more oval design. Google has the, just a straight up circle. And you have a dual camera setup on the OnePlus 6 and the single amazing camera on the Pixel 2 XL. The design wise, OnePlus 6 went with that glass back design now. You can get two and coming up with three colors. You have the mirror black, which is this very reflective black here. They have the matte black version, uh, which I think is called Midnight Black. And you also have Silk White, which I believe is getting released the week of June 4th. Over to the Pixel side, you have an aluminum body with a small glass panel on top, which houses your flash and your camera. Small camera hump. And to me, I always thought this white felt like the Silk White that OnePlus used to use back in the day. But you have the metal design, the orange power button, and nothing over here on the left. OnePlus does it where you have your power and your alert slider now has moved to the right side. And the other side, you just have your volume. So where they start to differ is the actual price. So OnePlus, what I actually paid for this device with two cases came out to be $606 shipped to my house. Um, it would have been just under $600 if I didn't get the two case bundle but you gotta have the matching cases to go with the phone. The Pixel back when I bought this was upwards of $800. Um, and that isn't even for the highest storage capacity one. I had the higher storage one, but I ended up getting rid of that. So which one should you buy? Well, that's not an easy question. <laughs> um, right now, you know, if you were gonna buy the Pixel on the secondhand market, be it Swappa, eBay, a friend, whatever, um, these devices can go from anywhere from $500 to six, closer to $700 and everywhere in between. And for this phone, that's a great price. You get a lot of nice features for that price tag. You get ingress protection, which is IP67. You get the squeeze feature, Google assistant, dual front facing speakers. You get the amazing camera. You also get the unlimited or, uh, two or three years of full photo storage on Google photos and you know, you can participate in the Android P beta right away as you can with the OnePlus 6, which I am doing right now. And you get that really nice fluid stock Android experience, which everyone has known and loved. Um, at least I have, some people may not. OnePlus 6 though, on the other hand, you have the brand new release device that just got released, just got talked about. You have a 1080p screen versus over here a QHD screen. Uh, you do have the faster processor, the, Q the 1080p screen, not that it looks bad right now, I got this cool cosmic wallpaper going on and it really shows off the device's colors. I really don't see a problem with the screen. The only time that I do notice the difference in sharpness is if I am uh, sometimes playing a game 
and sometimes if I'm just reading, if I'm really staring at the text, you may be able to see the difference. But in general, to the naked eye, you're not going to see the difference. Um, you get a lot of cool features in Oxygen OS. You get gesture support. Uh, Oxygen OS, which is OnePlus's skin on top of Android, gives you a whole lot of cool things. It is not overly done but it's also not lacking either. It's not a touch whiz or Samsung experience as they call it now. It's certainly not Emotion UI, which is Huawei's skin, but it's clean. It gives you some benefits where you can customize buttons. You have certain gestures like drawing on the screen. You have different things going on. Like if I draw an O on the screen, it'll open up my Google app. Because I was testing the gestures, and if you have gestures on OnePlus 6 right now, you can't actually use Google Assistant without even saying the hot word or creating a gesture, another gesture for it. Uh, the cameras is really where I would say these phones differ the most. I'd say they actually are very similar, because while there is no actual rating on the OnePlus 6 for water resistance, there is water resistance in the phone. So again, if you watch teardown videos of this device or even other people dropping this phone into water, the only time you really see an issue with water is if you leave it in a pool for a extended period of time, say five, 10 minutes um, in four or five foot of water, which at that point you're getting into the territory of what IP67 ingress protection is. Uh, you do have waterproofing around the SIM card tray, around all the ports. It's just not as robust as Apple, Google, definitely not Samsung and LG. They see, they put a lot of waterproofing on their phone. Even when I did my first look video, I showed you guys the SIM card trays, both on the Pixel and the OnePlus. And the Pixel just had a much beefier gasket onto the screen, <laughs> onto the SIM card tray, my mistake. So where I would say the biggest differences lie. To me, the biggest difference is this. Um, so far, in the two phones that Google has made, they've done a great job keeping support for their devices, whether that be software. Um, I had a, a problem with my first Pixel 2, or now, not first Pixel 2, my first Pixel, where it had screen burn-in, and they replaced it with a new one for me, uh, which was a real easy process. I haven't had an easier one outside Apple dealing with uh, warranty problems. They do offer that, that Google Photo storage instead of having it bogged down your device with a ton of stuff. There is no expandable memory on either of these, so they are even there. Uh, so I've just seen a very good, so far, track record with updates and support for the Pixel 2 and the Pixel phones. OnePlus has kind of been hit or miss with how good their support has been. Uh, it has either been very good or not so good. So they had devices like the 3 and 3T that weren't receiving the necessary updates or uh, what they said were gonna get updates until long after the promised date. They did eventually do it. They did eventually get the software update out there, but it did take some time. Now, I know they have gotten better, and they've already pushed updates to the six, but with their TikTok release schedule, meaning they do their big release in May, and then they do a smaller incremental release uh, in the fall, you know, it's hard to always keep up developing two phones a year and developing two softwares because they seem to be switching what they're doing on their devices every year, whether that be different camera setups, different software setups. The 5T had face unlock, which the 5 didn't, and then the 5 got it. So it's kind of all over the place. But the one thing that I will say that you get over the Pixel is, yes, there is a big developer community for the Pixel, but there is an even bigger developer community for the OnePlus. OnePlus has basically become the Nexus phone of days past. Nexus phones from Google were the ones that certainly got all the developer support. They were easy. They were uh, more affordable than other flagships at the time. And people made ROMs and customizations like crazy. And now where we see those is in the OnePlus forum. So no, you maybe might lose out on the actual support from OnePlus in time, but you will have developer and community support for a very long time on the OnePlus and also on the Pixel. Really what it comes down to of what device you're gonna pick is this. Um, software, these phones are the most similar out of any two phones that I've had side by side before. 
Uh, hardware, obviously this is a 2017 phone. This is a 2018 phone. So this is obviously newer. It is very fast. It is the fastest phone I've tested, but just I'll show you very quickly, again, in a very unscientific way here, just some of the speed of this phone and also how good the Pixel keeps up with it. And again, speed tests really don't mean anything, but just to prove to you that I'm not lying when I say that they're both fast. Just open up a few apps. Uh, we'll go over to here. We'll open up something a little more heavy. They are within seconds of each other, especially in stock apps and even more so in uh, third-party apps. Just really depends. So the, um, let's see, we'll do uh, last one will be Spotify. So they're right neck and neck. And it goes to show something with how at least I think Android P is handling uh, the Snapdragon 835. And it also goes to show you just how fast OnePlus 6 actually is. You do have unique features like the face unlock, which has been fooled by a photo, but they aren't saying that this is as secure as, say, iPhone. But it's something you have. It's not the Samsung iris scanning. It's not the iPhone 10 face unlock. It's there. I still use my fingerprint more than anything. And if you're worried, you don't have to use it. So it comes down to this price. Um, if these phones were priced exactly the same, which if you can get one for exactly the same price, myself, personally, I would go for the Pixel for just one reason alone. Uh, I have done a com camera comparison with these two, and the Pixel in most scenarios will beat it, at least in the color representation, the detail, or just sheer, there's more options for you to do. The one thing that I forgot to mention in that video was the absolute atrocity that my panoramic photos came out to be. The stitching just did not work great the few times I've tried it on the OnePlus. If you had a tripod or a way steadier hand, it'd be fine. But things like that for me happened on the Pixel a lot more easily than on the OnePlus 6. But if you're looking for a phone that is the latest, fastest, has the, the you know, closest release schedule to 2018, but you still want that stock experience, the OnePlus is certainly not going to let you down. And like I mentioned in my camera comparison, I've never seen a $500 to $600 phone keep up with the seven, eight, nine hundred dollars phones on so many levels, even with camera now as OnePlus has not always been the greatest when it came to what their cameras were doing. It was always good, but now I could really say for a $500 phone, it has a great camera. Um, so like I said, it comes down to price. If you can pick up a Pixel for the same price that you're gonna pick up a OnePlus 6 for, I would go with the Pixel, just because you'd certainly, you definitely, Google's gonna give you those monthly security updates. They're gonna give you those major updates to Android P, whatever next year's Android's gonna be you're gonna get them 100%. I'm not saying you won't get them on the OnePlus, but I will bet you more that you'll get them on the Pixel. Uh, you also get that ingress protection, you get the dual front facing speakers, and you also get that amazing camera. Uh, they both have quick charge, but the OnePlus certainly beats it in dash charging capabilities. Literally the fastest charging phone I have ever had, right up there with what Huawei does, which I would call the second fastest phone I have charged. Uh, not that the Pixel charges slow, it does have the USB-C connector, it does charge very fast. And you know what, if you decide the Pixel is a little old and you go with the OnePlus 6, you get the headphone jack, you do get splash resistance, you get those dual cameras which has improved greatly in low light. You have one bottom firing speaker which is okay, and you have I guess the most 2018 display with the notch in the top. Whether you like it or not, it is going to be there, but you can turn it off. So anyway. Short little video about why to pick. It's really hard to pick against these two guys because they are so, so similar, especially as the price comes down. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Which one are you going to pick if you are going to buy the one of these phones today? Uh, honestly, I, I wouldn't be unhappy with either selection of these phones. I, I would be all right with both. So um, thanks again for watching, guys. 
If you liked it, you know what to do. If you didn't, you also know what to do. More content coming your way. I'm probably going to update my release schedule to three videos a week now that things are going really well. And uh, yeah, so look forward to that. And I will see everyone in the next video.